What is a millennial? It's a category used to describe a group of people, a generation. It's also a judgment and perhaps a misunderstanding. And people don't like to be judged, let alone misunderstood. So there can be friction. We're gonna spend a little time on each other's turfs, find some common ground, or maybe find gaps that are too wide to cross. We'll explore what we know, what we don't know, and with luck, some things that we didn't even know we don't know. We're gonna explore the character of millennials. They're accused of being all me, me, me. But is the reality that they're one part of a larger generation we? Hey, I'm TK Thorpe. I'll be our host on this journey of discovery. I'm 35 years old, which makes me a millennial. I DJ, I host events, and hey, I even have my own catering company. That's three jobs. One, two, three, yeah. That's very millennial. I also believe who we are as individuals says way more than any label could. Also, very millennial. Now personally, I'm hoping that all generations have something more in common than people expect. After all, we're at the dawn of a new millennium. How sad would it be if younger and older generations aren't moving into the future together? But I know all people are shaped and molded by what we grow up with, and we carry that throughout the rest of our lives. So I'm searching for common ground, but I might not find it. I'm down for connecting with people from different ages, races, and of course, different places. But first, what the hell is a millennial? Millennials are uh, an age range between the mid 80s and the 90s, I believe. I should have like Googled this because like the word is just thrown around. I don't actually have any idea like what it is. Anyone from age 20 to 39, which sounds a little broad. When I think of millennial, I think of my little sisters. Someone who's a young adult right now in 2019. I always thought of it as the generation that grew up with just enough analog technology to appreciate the internet revolution. A millennial is new age. Young people that are like taking over the world or contributing more to the world in a way that I like. <laughs> yeah. A millennial is something that exists that I'm not quite sure is real. A bit of an amorphous concept. I don't know if anyone really knows what it is and I don't think anyone really wants to be one. I feel like millennials kind of take a little bit of shit. <laughs> Major buzzwords that I hear be entitled. Noncommittal. Young. Self-centered. Extravagant. Disrespectful. When people have things handed to them. Flippant. Ungrateful. Lazy. 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 That they're lazy and don't have to work for what they have. <laughs> All right. It's kind of negative. But is this what older generations think? That's what I really want to know. And the problem is, I just can't go on my phone and ask them. I know we join a conversation online, but if I ask an older person to join me in a chat, they'll probably throw on a coat and say, where do you want to meet? So I'll throw my phone aside and we'll take it old school. Meet in the streets, in senior lounges, high tech clubs, old school stores, and yes, hipster pubs, only to ask this one question. Are millennials bad? So here we are, we're about to enter a place called Have a Yarn. We're gonna have a conversation with some knitting enthusiasts about a couple of things. And find out, in fact, is there a big generation gap when it comes to knitting? And in that process, find out if these nimble fingers can knit myself a blanket to keep me warm on these cold nights. Hello, there. how you doing? Good, good, how are you? Good. Good. I think I'm in the right place. I'm looking for a place to go knitting. Absolutely, this is it. Have a seat. So have you ever knit before? I have not. Anybody very... in your family? Or... It may seem cliche to say, but my grandmother. My grandmother, oh gosh. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's basically two sticks okay. and some string. Mm -hmm. So you make your loop. <laughs> How big? Doesn't matter. Okay. Okay. And then you bring the other end up through. Yep. Like this, all mm -hmm. right. And snug it up. 
That's just your basic clip knot. You're going to stick your needle right through there oh, okay. and snug it up on your needle and that's your first stitch. So there's all kinds of ways to start your knitting off. I'm going to show you the one that I learned just because to me it's fairly easy. It's called a knitted cast on. Do you want to try your first stitch? Yes, please. Okay. Hey, you're getting it. Awesome. This is great. Nimble thing Fingers Thorpe is in the building, ladies and gentlemen. And then you watch these people sitting here it's knitting no without problem. looking. No problem, yeah. Like it's, yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so when did you first start knitting? I can probably remember I was eight, maybe, and my mom taught me, and I remember sitting in a rocking chair in the old homestead. And, but it's a wonderful pastime. It's very relaxing. Now, what would you say to those who would think that this, perhaps, knitting in general, is for older generation? I think that's the way the, it's been cited, but it's definitely not. It doesn't matter whether they're 12 or in their 20s, 30s, 40s. It's, you're just people. You're just people that love knitting. Yeah. And I think if you went to a lot of college and university dorms, I know there's a lot of the girls that knit. I would think that this is a more female-centered activity, mm. perhaps if the gender roles have changed over the years. I think that's definitely uh, uh, the perception. And while women probably, they're still in the majority perhaps, there are a lot of men who knit. I think that is a misconception. And if you look back historically, at one point before the Industrial Revolution, it was only men that were allowed to knit because uh, they were guilds. And when the machinery came along to do the knitting, then the women took it up as a, a cottage craft. But a lot of men have continued to knit. I think that's a misconception, yeah. in a nutshell. Yes, yeah. no, it's <laughs> I don't know too much about young people. Uh, Except that I don't see them too often. A lot I don't know about the young people, simply because I don't have the uh, contact with them now that I used to have. Some older people don't have much to do with the younger generation, and they only hear the bad. Baby boomers kind of squawk about young people ruining it for everyone. We're a generation that's trying to make a, a lot of change, uh, but I think that we for some reason we get a bad name. It's just a category that we have imposed on a certain generation of, of young people that uh, were born, was it in the 90s? 90s, I think. Little slot of time that you fit into. I suppose you're talking about generations? That's what I would say, but I may be wrong. Well, I wonder why it's even called millennial if it goes that far back and how they really classify that stuff. Well, we're talking about generations. We're talking about people born in the same age cohorts. Age cohorts are people born in about a 20 year period. Sociologists study them. The idea is that we are the product of our own environment. And if we grow up in very different environments from our parents, that would be a big reason why we have problems understanding each other. Although we grew up in the same houses, we live in different worlds. You can look to previous generations to see what I mean. The lost generation fought in World War I. Millions of them didn't come home. By the time it was over, the maps were redrawn, flappers started dancing, and there was a new social order. The greatest generation, born between 1900 and 1930. They lived through the Great Depression and fought World War II. They pretty much saved the world. The silent generation, they were born after the First World War, and they were too young to fight in the second. They were kind of silent. The baby boomers were born in the population surge after the war. They lived in a long period of relative peace and economic good times. But it wasn't all smooth. Remember the 60s? Generation X experienced mainly social change. Men and women both in the workplace. Divorce, less supervision, and more freedom. The millennials. Hey, that's my group. Born roughly between 1975 and 1996. We don't think we're understood or appreciated. Now that we concocted the idea of meeting the older generations face to face, we need to test our plan. It's go time. Pickleball. What is it? I'm not quite sure. But from my understanding, it's kind of like table tennis meets badminton. 
And if I'm missing something, I'm sure the people here will be glad to let me know. But for now, I must channel my inner Serena Williams and destroy all competition. See you on the court. Hello, Alan. Alan. And the best man wins. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> OK, my friend. Alan and I are from different generations, and we don't know each other. We've chosen a competitive sport for our test run. I could have the edge because I'm young, but Alan could have the edge because he's experienced. Hopefully, we don't take it too seriously. Then again, how seriously can you take something called pickleball? <laughs> uh, right now, we're having a, a pretty good game so far. We just started. He scored a point. I am zero. Not surprising, but tables can turn. Pickleball was invented in the summer of 1965 in Washington State. Two guys returned home from playing golf to find their families were bored. They decided to play badminton, but the shuttlecock was missing. They substituted a plastic wiffle ball and some ping pong rackets. They lowered the net to bounce the ball, and boom, pickleball was born. It's a game for all ages, and it was an instant smash hit. It's been served up all over the world. You just gotta slightly tap it in, just over that's, the net. That's a good one. Yeah. He's a hard pawn to play with. <laughs> so far, very surprisingly, this game is more athletic than I originally thought, especially we're playing one-on-one. -on -one. Generally, I think you play this game uh, two on two. Are you telling me the truth? You've never played before? I've never played before. This is my first time. <laughs> I never even heard of it till the other week. Sometimes we lob the ball to each other. Sometimes we drive it. It's a good metaphor for conversation. But I'm not here to talk. I'm gaming the scenario to see if it works. Good job. The fact that I get to meet new people and try a new game is a bonus and a pleasure. Your serve. We're down, but we're not out. Remember, never give up. We may have played against each other, but I feel like we became a team. They didn't throw any unexpected offense at me, and I didn't play too much defense. This is game point right here. We have fun. I consider this a success. <laughs> we have important things to discuss, and none of us are getting any younger. <laughs> Good game. <laughs> so I come here Tuesdays and Fridays from Moncton. And just for this, and then I come on Thursday to the swimming there in the gym, and we do laps. So we've got to keep in shape for somebody who's coming up 77 in April. <laughs> You're the first, guys. Looks like I'll be back Tuesdays and Fridays with my man Alan here. <laughs> we'd love to have you back. Yes, it'd be great. Me. <laughs> Believe me. A millennial is very involved with the internet. They are so dependent on the internet, they have very little experience in connecting with uh, reality. I think the internet is not reality. People of my age, some are into the technology much more than I am. I think it's marvelous that you can be so skillful using it. I have to struggle with my cell phone. Technology is probably pushing us apart in some ways. And the longer we divide people into groups, the harder it is to get them back together again. I don't think that oftentimes we are, we are our own agents in deciding how much technology we're consuming. I think it's deeply rooted in capitalism and a system that wants you to consume content at a crazy rate. It's good, very good business to get as many gadgets in your hand as possible and to keep rolling them out bit by bit so that every one is a little bit better than the next one so you have to have that one. I think it's pretty easy for people in older generations to dismiss technology. Even though they experience the benefits when they visit their doctor, get directions, and most importantly, shop online. But I think older people may be intimidated by it, or even resent it. Some people don't like what it's doing to our way of life and its effects on younger people. How does it compare using your imagination for entertainment like they did? We're gonna drop real seniors into a virtual world. They'll explore the best recreation technology has to offer. Can older people even process the joys of technology? Will they upgrade to virtual entertainment? And the bigger question, does technology make millennials and seniors incompatible?
time to immerse myself in a little thing we like to call virtual reality. That's right. This little thing right here, you can be on the moon. You can be shooting zombies. You literally can be anywhere. And you know what? I can't think of anything better than bridging the gap between millennials and older generations than virtual reality. Hey, TK, where are you? Hey, I'm in here, guys. Hey, how you doing? Good, how you doing? Awesome, awesome. awesome. Good to see you. Good to see you. Yes, you too. How you guys good doing? Good to see you. Very good. good. <laughs> Have you guys ever done virtual reality before? Never. No. Awesome. With virtual reality, you're not only looking at a screen, you're wearing the screen. Holy uh -huh. jokes. Ken will start off scuba diving. We hope he's not in over his head. Because the visor is light tight, the illusion is absolute. And so is his immersion. He can't look away. Wherever he turns his head, there's something to see. You know, just like in reality. Holy gee, there's creepers, yes. <laughs> we'll let Ken drift around for a bit. Then we'll beam him across the universe and dial up the intensity. I think it's awesome. It's so clear, it's unbelievable. This is awesome. <laughs> when they shoot at you, you can dodge out of the way. Wow, it slows it right down, eh? Yeah. Oh, holy cows and deep retorts. Oh, let's switch it up. I need a break. Ken never did that in his backyard, but if he could have, he would have. <laughs> you look like you're getting ready. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> this is my stance. This is your stance. Yeah, <laughs> for running away. Yeah. This is it. I'm playing a zombie shooter game, and the violence of video games is something that's certainly controversial with older people. But zombies are a metaphor for the end of the world, and the end of the world is controversial with younger people. Anyways, back to the game. <laughs> it's so hot out, guys. It's just, it's, it's unbearable. Oh. It doesn't look like what it looks like on the screen. No, I mean, no. even that just, that's it's... intense looking at that. I can't imagine going into that world. I want one of these now. I don't know. <laughs> this is, but the problem is I would just be downstairs in the basement all the time. That's right. Just, <laughs> like, where's TK? He, we lost him to virtual reality. <laughs> Laura's tastes are a little bit different. She wants something peaceful, but exciting. Oh. She chooses something many people would love to do, but can't afford. She's gonna swim with a blue whale. And just like that, she's eyeball to eyeball with the world's largest mammal. Oh, oh my God. It's pretty real, eh? Now we'll raise her from below the surface to way above the sea level, changing her altitude and her pulse. Oh my God, look, I have legs and stuff. It's a virtual amusement park. Can you guess what's most real? Ah! Yup, her screaming. Holy smokes. That, stay oh, that, that, that was that. That was good. I thought it was flying in the air and just gonna, <laughs> I'm just gonna die, I, I guess. It over the phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My heart is just rushing. It's just yeah, like, it's... and my knees are shaking. And like, <laughs> I felt like I got off a roller coaster. <laughs> so, what'd you guys think? Well, I thought it was incredible. I thought she screamed a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's, so, it's just so real. Yeah. It's very real. It's like you, you've taken from this world to another world altogether, and it's, it's, you are in that world. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, just it's amazing. It's very, really Crazy. vivid. Intense. Very uh, yeah. intense. Yeah. Would you ever get one of these? <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. I think it would be uh, something to worth consider for sure. Yeah. It's uh, the next uh, gaming thing, really. It yeah. just kind of brings it all to a new level sort of thing. Uh, they could, uh, could, yeah, 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 and we could start a team. <laughs> I mean, we may as well kill some zombies together, you know. <laughs> this would be fun. Yeah. I've never been a video game player. I don't do that at mm -hmm. all. But I think I could get into this Yeah. because it's so... Like it's so interactive it's, and so real. I think real. The there's a lot of things yeah. that I would consider experiences. Yeah. We purposely don't even use video games when we talk about ourselves or yeah. advertising. We talk about experiences, but then we quickly shift from an experience, like the underwater one, yeah. into shooting guns, yeah. and they don't even realize that they're now a gamer or playing yeah. games. Not only is this good for, for fun, 
um, you were saying that it could be used for medical purposes as well. Yeah, so we've almost finalized a contract with a children's hospital to, to develop some uh, rehabilitation software uh, for children with disabilities. Um, in particular, we're starting with a uh, like a wheelchair training simulator, wow, that type of thing. Cool. I just find it's, it's kind of like a, a good way for a nerd to be a superhero. We feel we can like change the world with by writing code. And well, what's really kind of cool is that anybody can participate in this, no matter their age, really. We had a, a woman bring her grandmother in who's always wanted to go to Australia, was in close to palliative care. Um, they brought her in, we took her on a trip to Australia. It just brought so much happiness yeah. to everyone in the room, it was just That's amazing. Cool. My favorite yeah. customers we have here, God love them, they're, they're approaching their 70s. It started with, we don't, we're not gamers, we want to try something different. Yeah. Um, we started with a bunch of nature stuff. They now buy 20 hours at a time. They come in, they play, they get connected, and they slay monsters and aliens and zombies <laughs> for two hours straight. And they and just watching them oh, is the best so part nice. of the day. They're bonding, yeah. talking about knitting <laughs> while they're blasting aliens in the face. Yeah. And I'm just like, That's this so is great. awesome. This is awesome. wicked. Well, thank you very much. Well, this was you. awesome. I enjoyed it. Yes. It was a great afternoon. It was great nice having you guys. Yes, thank you for the too. experience. Yeah. It was great, guys. Awesome. Was, we'll be back to come fun. down here. Millennials are supposed to be all about the tech. And even I. Me, haven't heard of those things. Fulfilling a dying person's dreams, it's amazing. But it does make me wonder if a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. Do our different views on technology throw a light on what divides us, but not on what we have in common? Or even worse, is technology changing too fast for old and young people to hop on the same tech train, same tech time, together? I think technology is incredible because it allows us to do an immense amount of things. Every time you write something down on a piece of paper, you're extending your mind out into the world. Uh, so in that sense, a phone can be really powerful because it's that, you know, on crack. People can learn things faster and they can like study things that they're interested in and they don't have to leave their house to do that. Because I've always had a hard time communicating my thoughts. A lot of it goes on internally and I've found through technology that that's almost been helpful. It's definitely like this back and forth push of having access to all of this technology, but then also being scolded and scorned for using it all the time, which is kind of what we grew up on, so that's kind of what we know. Would you say, like, perhaps one thing I guess the younger generation could learn is to you know, stereotypically, we're on our phones all the time. Mm -hmm. We're sitting in mm -hmm. front of the computer all the time. Um, would you say they should just get out there and try activities like this? Perhaps maybe put the phone down mm -hmm. for a little bit and have a conversation with others. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Not to say that we don't use our phones and iPads. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're constantly looking up patterns, yarns, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> that sort of yes. thing. So there's certainly a crossover, but yeah, no, I, I totally yeah. get what you're saying. Yeah. I think that's, that's interesting that you bring that up is because people would think older generations don't know much about the internet mm. and mm. millennials <laughs> have just kind of grown up with a computer or an iPad yeah. just born right into their lap. Mm. But true. now I, I think it's, it's a good bridge. Mm. And I think that's another uh, misconception where the older generation doesn't know how to use technology today. Yeah, no, I, you're right. And we're very motivated to learn. A, well, I mean, good. I have to yeah. because that's that's what I do. Right. But a lot of my customers, many of my customers are far better at it than I am yes. because they, uh, they spend a lot of time doing it. We don't even stock the number of physical patterns anymore that right. we once did because people are coming through that door with patterns on their phone. They're scrolling through their phone. This is what I need. This is my pattern. And this isn't just the younger people. This is every generation pretty well. Yeah. Put a whole new spin on knitting for sure. Right. It's sure. very welcomed. Oh, absolutely. Right. It's embraced. Yeah. So yeah, we couldn't yeah. get along without it. I'd say yeah. at this point, we, we couldn't look back. The telephone is meant to work for us. Good telephone manners aren't difficult. They're easy. Cell phones. Well, everybody uses them. I get bought it out too. I find about the young generation is they everyone got a cell phone, and they, they sit and they don't talk to each other. You know, they would be at a table and 
texting other people right there at the table. You don't take your cell phone with you, I hope, and sit it at somebody's table, because if they were mine, they, they did it once, they'd never do it again. Nothing is that important that you have to be in total contact with the rest of the world all day long. If you want to connect with older people, a swimming pool is a great place to go. For a generation trying to stay young, water is the perfect environment for exercise. It's great for your knees and joints. It also protects against falling and offers a lot of resistance to maintain those muscles. And I'm hoping to make a good impression. First, I've got to ease in and warm up to this new activity. It's all really great right now. Very tiring, actually. Very surprising, something I wouldn't expect. Water is also electronic technology's natural enemy. So maybe we can talk freely here, safe from the danger of bad signals and misinterpretation. I have some good teachers surrounding me. Overall, been a great experience. Thank you very much. Oh, you're most welcome. Did you have a good time? Yes, I did. It was a good workout, eh? I'd say. Ready to go. All right, thanks. Thank you. Oh my God, it was something I didn't expect. You know what? Thank you very much, Liz. That was a great class. But you know, it's time to cool off, relax, and get into the hot tub. Thank you very much again, ladies, for letting me be a part of this amazing class. How long have you guys been doing this? Well, after my husband died, it was 2010, I, a neighbor asked me, do you want to go to an exercise class? And so it's been nine years. Or something that you want to tell people about this class that may be afraid or don't know much about it, that, that you want to maybe encourage new people to come and, and check it out? One huge bonus when I first started coming, because I was new to the community, is the fellowship. It's a lovely community here. Yeah. It's so friendly. It felt good coming in here. Yeah. I, just, I think I felt the energy and it felt, it felt nice. Yeah. Very welcoming faces. Yeah. I come not only for the exercise, but just as much for the, uh, for the social aspect. I think as you age, you realize you need friends around you more and you need conversation and it really helps your your emotional and mental health. We interact with each other, not with each other via technology. Right, yeah. yeah. I think it's probably been one of the longest moments I haven't been on my phone, which yeah. is good. Because <laughs> it kind of forces you to put it down. You can't bring the phone in the water, right? No. Uh, usually if I go to work out at a gym, I, I do have my phone with me or I'm listening to music. But I think in this case, the advantage here is that you, you're able to have a conversation with one another, yeah. which I, I find it right now in time with the millennials, is kind of being lost as we have texting and, and the communication has been, uh, has been changed. Yeah, I didn't want to generalize, but when the texting came yeah. in, our two sons just thought it was great. Right. You know, yeah. like, oh, we don't have to worry about how long mom's going to be on the phone. <laughs> I want to hear the tone in your voice. Exactly. I want to yeah. hear how you are, how, how you're you feeling. Can, you can tell just from my yep. voice. Yeah, you can say. tell. So we submerged ourselves into some conversation and let our opinions float to the surface. But I'm not sure if we got to the bottom of our differences or just in deeper water. Let's carry on and take on the whole ball of yarn. Let's see if we can stitch together a consensus. Or if our phones are a knot that can't be undone. I think our generation has a lot of anxiety because we don't do a lot of face-to-face -face contact. The problem is, is that we actually are losing that sense of human connection. And people don't know how to, to do the face-to-face -face thing anymore. It's not hard to generate a conversation with people. I think people are, would like to talk, I mean, rather than just sit there stone-faced, you know, looking at the ceiling or whatever. It's really up to us as, as parents and as friends, as, as a community, again, to just remind each other, hey, like, let's go for a walk. Do you think perhaps we lost the art of talking to one another? And I say that as in, 
you know, we have email, texting, mm -hmm. and computers. I think and I there think is something to be said for that. I think that's huge. Yeah, yeah that's I a, think that yeah, that can yeah. be an issue. And I find yeah. a lot of, you know, emotions and understanding is kind of, in this case, well, that case misread. Mm. Um, but when you're talking to somebody eye yeah. to eye and you can see their body movements and their, their manners, it's a yes. lot easier to yes. get their point coming across. This collective generation is probably almost as guilty of it you know, I text constantly, right. constantly yeah. with my friends yeah. and, you know, yeah. my, my family. But we also talk. I'm on the texting also, and I have found that some things that I have said could be construed different than what I definitely meant them to be, and that would be the last thing that I would ever want. Um, so I'm very careful. I'd rather pick up the phone, and if I did say something wrong, then I could correct it immediately. Right. Phones make people sad. Uh, if I use Instagram too much, I'm a sad guy. Despite the fact that a lot of us know that, we still go about it. These things are really addictive. 100% it's addictive, and I think in a way that uh, is very manipulative. Face-to-face -face communication can really be an antidote to all these emotions that we feel like we can't relate to other people. I think phones are part of a bigger problem in our society. Uh, we keep building suburbs that are not walkable. Uh, you have to use electronic communication because you don't necessarily even know your neighbor just because of the way that we build cities now. You know, it's not just phones, but I think they're part of a larger problem. Who are the people who are most likely to succeed? Why don't I ever get chosen for something like this? Most likely to succeed. You were at the point where the road has many branches. You must follow some definite plan. That's what I have to do with my own future. I've got to look ahead. Yeah, I actually am unemployed. <laughs> I have a lot of friends who would probably be able to give you a similar answer. So I work as a musician and then um, as like a server and bartender and an ax throwing coach. I work four jobs because I have to. Like it's, it's just how it is these days. I actually work a retail job. I was a barista for several years. I worked, uh, I worked in an office for about six years before that. For us, there is no advantage for sticking with a job for so long because before you got uh, a pension and awesome benefits and amazing job security and that you knew that that was going to be there when those things don't exist for us. My family's like really putting the stress on lately. They're like, you gotta get your life together. And I'm like, well, I already did all my schooling and that didn't do anything for me. So here I am. I have a degree. I sunk myself into tremendous debt to get that degree because I felt obligated to. I think the problem is that we have this past generation influencing the millennials now being like, you have to get a bachelor's degree in something. It doesn't matter. And we do that and then we're looking at them and being like, well, now what? Going to university seems so pointless because we know so many people that get a degree that it still somehow doesn't end up in them getting a job. You see so many people working at McDonald's who, you know, have more debt than any, anyone in the next generation. When I was growing up, life was a lot simpler. When you finished high school, you had for girls, you had about three choices of, of career. But today, young people can be anything they want to be. And there's no such thing as careers just for females or careers just for males. I feel for the younger, some of the younger generation who can generate their own uh, careers, those who, who don't have the ambition to find something for themselves, I think are in the minority. We're trying our best, but the whole system is kind of set up for us to fail at this point. Their parents wanted their children to have a better life than they had. That was so ingrained in them that when they got older, they felt entitlement. Yeah, I know some lazy, privileged people and those things might be connected, privilege and laziness and having things handed to you. It's not always related at all. No, I don't think millennials are lazy. I think we work harder than a lot of folks. Axe throwing sounds violent, but in reality, it's fun and therapeutic. Millennials have discovered another way to beat stress in this fast-paced world. I've invited a couple baby boomers to try it, but will it be too edgy for them, or will they get a handle on it?
very, very tough act to follow. <laughs> Just throwing that out there. Have you guys seen that? For an old gal, not bad at all. Better than I thought. I'm giving him a run for the money. Oh, what a turn. You got her. Paul Bunyan. <laughs> <laughs> Golden Axe. Lots of games <laughs> of Golden Axe, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Trying to get the bullseye, but um, sometimes you gotta take what you get. No complaints. Well, it wasn't the bullseye, but I had fun doing it. I think that's the main point. Is there any advice you'd like to give me? Well, I think uh, holding with the thumb is, is important. Key, yes. Picking the right axe. This is true. Yeah. Which one did you pick? Did you pick? I the... went second to the second lightest. Are you going to go for that one again? I certainly am. So basically, guys, what we're going to do before you take off, we're going to do one game to see who the real champion is here, Terry or TK. Put my money on you, Terry. Now, what we're going to do is going to be five throws, OK? Now, before we start, a little sign of respect we like to show to our competitor. We're going to tap our axes together. A little friendly lumberjack low five. Good luck, guys. Good luck. Yeah. Yeah, good luck. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> no oh, pressure. Geez. No pressure. <laughs> See? <laughs> Maybe I should switch sides. <laughs> we could do that if you like. No, I'm good. <laughs> Next, we'll put our noses to the grindstone and see if we can split the difference in our opinions. That will be a bullseye for me. Well, what'd you think? I think she was great. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I was pleasantly surprised. I thought it was going to be hard. Uh, well, it was hard. I'm not, you know, it wasn't that easy, but easier than I thought. No, yeah. it's a it, nice experience. No, it was. And, and, and at first, it's a little intimidating. And when I was throwing, I wanted to throw it really hard. Yeah. I was like, this is the only way it's going to stick. Yeah. But then after a while, you kind of figure out the technique. And it's not about as hard as you can throw. It's just, you know, a good it's... harmony with everything. I totally agree. Yeah. yeah. For this documentary, we're kind of breaking down the stereotypes between generations um, and figuring out is there this huge gap between millennials and like older generations and can we get along? I think we've broken that down easily yeah, that today. Yeah, wasn't too bad this afternoon. Yeah, it was amazing. We're surrounded by millennials Yes, today. exactly. <laughs> I feel quite at home. Yeah, I and mean, of course there's like those stereotypes with um, millennials saying that we're lazy. Um, do you, would you agree with some of these? We have four kids. Mm -hmm. Three uh, are Generation X, but the youngest is a millennial. No, he was last born, so he wasn't the only child, so he didn't grow up like he was perfect and everything was about him because he had uh, three siblings. But a lot of millennials today, I think, came from a family of one or two. How he's like a millennial is, is he changes career. Yeah. Right. And with me, I was in the same job all my life. You know, I just applied for one job and it took me right to retirement. Yeah, and that's but, definitely come up in conversation yeah. where back a couple years ago, there was either a couple of job choices and you're just there working that's the same exactly job. I had three options. <laughs> Nurse, teacher, secretary. Wow. Nurse was out. There's no way I was wearing those white uniforms. <laughs> uh, teacher, I did think about that for a long time because I, I like kids and I, we had four mm -hmm. and uh, you know I, I did think about that for a while but I ended up with a secret being a secretary and a mom yes I took quite a few years off to have my four kids mm -hmm. and I stayed at home with them so quite different than nowadays yeah it's... a they don't have the kids they don't have four right and they they do change careers I think they get Bored. I know our son gets bored being mm -hmm. the same thing. Would you may maybe is it that we're 
bored or maybe just not happy with the job perhaps? Yes, or? We, we put up with a lot more. Mm -hmm. You know, we tolerated bosses that were maybe not the nicest bosses to work for and uh, you know, we had responsibilities of family and we kind of put up with a lot of stuff that your generation isn't willing to put up with. Right, and, that and I applaud you for that. Hey Jerry, there's that new girl in our math class. Oh yes. Her name's Carolyn Ames. She's a swell kid. Do you know her? Not very well. I wish I did. You know, you better think some more, fellow, about what to do on a date. Do you think you'll have a good time? Yes, there are lots of things to do on dates. If you do these things, you'll know what to do on your day. Excuse me. I'm a date. Oh, come on now, I'm not giving you any secrets here. <laughs> Dating in my day was easier. You knew everybody in the neighborhood, so you knew who you were going out with. There were norms that we were told by our parents, you refrain from any uh, ultimate intimacy until you're married. I finally met a girl after coming back home from being overseas. We were married for 79 years before she passed away. I think a lot of folks feel the grass is greener nowadays and they date around. They date multiple people at the same time or over the course of a couple of years. That doesn't necessarily make them happier. Trying to talk to my father about polyamorous relationships ended up in him comparing it to The Bachelor and how in the end you only get one rose. To which I then turned it around and said the whole show starts with him dating 16 women. So <laughs> it's really a case for both. People talk about relationships now being a little bit different than they used to be. Finding more polyamorous people, maybe more uh, heterosexual, homosexual, trans. I'm sure all of those other generations had Lots of people who were just not being heard were scared of talking out. So I don't necessarily believe that um, things have changed. I think that things have changed the way that people are talking about it and the people are being more open about it. I just think you have a lot more options than my grandparents might have had. Relationships are mon almost like commodified and you can very easily swipe and find the next best thing. Rather than putting a lot of energy and commitment into one relationship, I feel like that's something that we don't really see in our generation and that the older generations have done really well. Can we talk about relationship, perhaps? When, were, when was it okay to have a, a boyfriend? Or was that even a thing? Well, <laughs> what, was that, uh, I don't know. I'm pretty sure it was yeah, a thing. Well, <laughs> well, that, that was a thing with yeah. me because I met my boyfriend quite young. I met him at the fisheries exhibition in Lunenburg. He wanted to know if he could drive me home. And I said, oh God, I don't know. I'll have to ask my father. <laughs> yes, you can, he said, but you'll be in the house by 10 o'clock. I said, I will. Mm -hmm. How and old I, were you? 15. 15, yeah. But anyway, we went together for six years before we got married, so, wow. yeah. And I, I think that was my next kind of question was that people these days, I find, aren't getting married. Mm. I don't know if it's a commitment thing or now with the internet because people are dating online, is yeah. it a selection thing? Is it too easy? Are people, is there too much out there? Too many options? No, there's lots of old people that don't get married now for yeah. financial reasons. Well, yes, that's yeah. right. And uh, I know some couples have been together 30 years and they've never gotten married. Yeah. So it, it's a commitment people make to themselves and a piece of paper sometimes doesn't mean anything. Well, that piece of paper in the, maybe the church doesn't have that much significance to them. They already know that they want to spend the time together and that doesn't mean that we're, we were brought up that it did. All worlds evolve like that. Yeah. It, it never stays the same. Why is having a long-term relationship a right choice? And why should millennials strive to have one? For older generations, it was simple. That's what you did. Maybe what's different now is how old we are when we start these relationships and how long they last. Maybe what's changed is how we're willing to take direction on how we're living our lives. Millennials have stopped casting ourselves in traditional roles. We don't like the stereotypical characters we've been given. So, we're changing the script. 
it's uh, it's okay to speak up about your sensitivity now, uh, which is new. So maybe we're just not used to that yet. And being sensitive doesn't mean you can get your own way all the time. Most young people take time to reason things out. There are some the hotheads with a with a short fuse, but that was ever the same. It's the same with my generation. I think young people are alive and, and they have wonderful uh, uh, ideals. I don't always see in, in older people, but the young people have them. It's very true that we are kind of this snowflake generation that has been told that you're extremely special and everything that you're doing is important and good and it's very focused upon us versus older generations have been a bit more, it's not really about how you feel, it doesn't matter how you feel, it's kind of just like lace up your boots and go do the thing, it doesn't really matter. Everybody has been told, you know, what are you crying about, toughen up, like all of these really toxic things. Being sensitive is really tough. Being aware of what's going on both in your head and how that impacts the world around you, that's really important. I definitely think people are like more okay with speaking up about how they feel now. For myself, you know, I. I have like mental health stuff and my mom the other day said it seems like back in the day nobody had mental health problems now everyone does and it's like no actually like everyone's always had mental health stuff people are just more okay with talking about it now because there's support and people actually give a shit about it now. We have more of a vocabulary to describe what we're what we're really dealing with and what we're coping with the feelings that we have aren't new. A lot of people have gained voices and been able to get attention and accessibility through social media. So we can listen to more people and we do listen to more people. Mental health is real. It's been for years. Um, queerness, that is real. It's not new. But people are more vocal about it because they're trying to create a life for themselves where they're happy in their own skin so they can kind of better contribute. And unless we stop allowing like passive racism to grow into other things, we realize that they're just going to keep happening unless we shut them down. So that's the only way that we have like a more fair and just and accepting world. I don't think we're more sensitive. I just think that we're less willing to put up with not addressing what's kind of tearing us apart. It seems that today we're not even willing to take a little bit of friction. We're it's just imme we're immediately quick to criticize true. if something rubs us the wrong way. Absolutely. I can see that. Yeah. yeah. To be politically correct, you have to worry about offending people. And hey, you know, that's not a bad thing. Yeah. There was a lot of uh, stuff that we should have been more aware of mm -hmm. back in the day. And I'm actually very glad that that's out in the open now and um, we have uh, a trans child and mm -hmm. they prefer the pronoun they awesome and at first it was difficult but you know what at the end of the day we just want them to be happy and that's all that really matters ultimately i would like to thank you guys for your time thanks for coming to hang out throw some axes have a couple beverages hang out and have a good conversation i applaud you for coming out and thank you very much it was fun. Awesome. Thank you, Thank I you. thoroughly enjoyed it. Yes. I'll yes. be back. That's yes. great. Yes. Awesome. Bye. Yeah. Well, there is a gap, and it would be nice if young people tried to bridge that gap. I've always been surprised by just how progressive of people I'll meet in that older generation. They have an incredible breadth of life experience. It's the kind of thing I don't think you can capture until you live it. There's judgment on both sides. If we judge them, they judge us. There's a lot of weight behind judgments and stereotypes. You see that <laughs> everywhere. People can be really vocal one way or the other across, across generations, right? The disconnect comes when people don't recognize that there's more similarities then there are differences. Communicating across boundaries is always hard, and it doesn't matter if you're talking to an old person or a young person. It'd be really nice for, for both sides, both millennials and the people looking down on millennials, to just understand each other's situations a little bit more. Um, and then also that millennials can look over it and say, hey, maybe I can do some of these other things that other generations have done, and maybe I can take some cues from them and, you know, learn. It's almost like they've been 
doing this life a little bit longer than we have. So they might have something to share with us as well. I have 10 grandchildren and two of them have said directly to me, gee, Opa, it's good talking to you. I'm learning something knowing you. They are learning and I'm glad I'm communicating with the millennials. You know, you don't have to change the future all at once. And like, even in your 40s and 50s, you can still be part of the future and part of the change. Doesn't mean that youth is the only way for that to happen. We should all share in the joys that come with the future. And it's rough holding people accountable. That sort of thing should not get in the way of us being able to communicate with the people who built this world for us and that we inherit. Do you think there is a big disconnect between millennials and older generations. I don't think there's a huge disconnect unless people make it, you know? It, that's totally up to the individual. I certainly am comfortable around any, any age group. I forget what generation I am most of the time. Well, that's what it kind of freaks me folks. out when I hear older generation. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. It's very bizarre because, you know, you start out in the world and you are the younger generation oh, yeah. and you're the one who is having the issues or, you know, the, mm. it, it was always called the generation gap yeah. when we yeah, grew yeah, up. Yeah. The millennials will become the older generation and then they will have a generation to deal with. Do you yeah. think we're blowing this whole thing out of proportion? <laughs> what, the gap? I don't the know. generation gap? It's got nothing to do with generation or age. It's who you get along with, who you, who you enjoy being with. Yeah. If you just know, you feel good with them, That's and right. it, they're right. lovely. I, yeah. just, hmm. I would never, ever not do that. Yeah. Mm -mm. No. Based on age. No. But Clearly, you guys are a great group of people who have an open mind to a lot of things. And I came in thinking one thing, and I was happily mm -hmm. surprised coming out thinking another. And learning to knit. Of course. <laughs> and when I come back, I hope to finish my blanket. <laughs> Visit seniors. Find ways to come in and, and just uh, be with them for a little while. Usually there are people sitting around just waiting for visitors. We're fortunate we have 10 uh, grandchildren. Uh, we love to be with them and they love to be with us. And so I've got a whole range of young people behind me <laughs> coming along. You have to be understanding. You can't always agree on everything. But uh, I, I think that the love, of course, is the prime motivation for that. I think that I have a great life and, and uh, I enjoy it immensely. The subjective viewpoint is very hard to get rid of, but it is possible to go beyond, to take another person's point of view, and then you are broadening yourself, you are enriching yourself, and you have ground to dialogue with other people. And I think that is the basis of community. So in conclusion, these old truisms still work. You can't judge a book by its cover, and the devil is in the details. And the only way to know this is by talking and walking in each other's shoes. We stand at the start of the next thousand years, and perhaps we stand where no one has stood before. There have never been this many people in the world, this much technology, and this much threat to our climate. And maybe it's a little lonely out here on the edge especially when nobody behind us can see exactly what we're looking at. But we're not the first generation to stand on the edge. And in the last hundred years, almost every generation has had to adapt. Facing world wars, an evolving economy, TV that wasn't on demand, and one phone for an entire family. There's a lot we can learn from each other if we share. I'm from what is sometimes called Generation Me. I'm inviting people to come talk so together we can learn and evolve and form a new virtual Generation We. You're asking me questions, you're, it's your fault if I'm just going off like crazy. <laughs> I'm 
35 years old, which makes me a millennial. Yeah, okay. Our telephone number in the store was 22. Two long rings and two short ones. People ask me how old I am, and I tell them I'm 101. So they can't believe it. It's always hard to get back when you're put on the spot. When I was uh, 12 years old, I used to breed gerbils. Generation B, generation. <laughs> Knitting and all that kind of stuff, it's coming back around. We can be cool too. Millennials can be cool, Grandma. <laughs>